All right, welcome to another installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews. Um, let's see. So this week we have four vids to do, but this, it's actually an even keel, which is maybe the first time this has happened, maybe not the last. Yeah. But we got two impressions videos to do uh, and two actual reviews because we got two early access games this week. Uh, not intended, just kind of forgot that one of them was early access and <laughs> the other one I couldn't get out of. So, And our first impressions video is on a game called the um, called not sure if it how to pronounce the final word here. I haven't heard an actual pronunciation, so gonna give it the best stab that we can. Um, Pirates of Gravite. It may be actually Gravity. I, I don't know. Like, if the dev wants to inform us of how that's pronounced, that's fine. But I'm going to go with Pirates of Gravite. Um, for the time being. Uh, anyway, so uh, Pirates of Gravity is, if nothing else, a unique game. Um, as, as you can see, so uh, like if you recall, um, very recently we talked about uh, Thrust Games and the legacy they're in with the Moonstuck review. And this game is kind of like that in the sense that you're flying a, I don't know, a ship tower i'm not exactly sure what the uh, like uh, some sort of pirate rocket like uh, i'm not exactly sure what this vehicle is but um it's basically a you know it is a rocket um that you have to take into account sort of um thrust it's nowhere near a actual simulation of uh, you know, actual Newtonian physics, like um, you know, lunar lander and gravitar tend, uh, and those of its so tend to be. Oh no, this is far more arcadey. But, uh, though you do have to keep tr uh, track of your direction, because even in an arcade-born game like this, um, having your engines uh, upside down isn't going to make you go up. Um, yeah, so that is important to keep in mind. Um, and it combines, you know, thrusting with arcade uh, pirate battles, for, back, uh, for lack of a better term. Like, I don't know, I'm reminded of the very forgotten Xbox Live arcade game Undertow. Um You know, in, in certain aspects, but like I said, if nothing else, I've never seen a game like this before. So it's got that going for it. Um, that being said, and it's also, of course, because I think this is uh, officially the indie game scene's most overused trend. Like, because both games have it, in different forms that I'm covering this week. Uh, and, you know, we've covered so, so many games that have it. But, say it with me now, it has roguelike elements. Um, which is really that, usely, loosely used sometimes. Like, I, I, sometimes they say they have roguelike elements. I was like, this is not really, I, I guess it's roguelike-like, but... I guess that, yeah, that... I'm like... In terms it's, a, of, it's a cheap way of increasing replay value by having some things be pro, be uh, procedurally generated and whatever. Yeah, mind you, like in the actual stages, you're not going to notice the procedural generation all that much because um, a lot of it's the you know it's the sky with floating rocks in it. I'm um, like really the biggest visual changes from stage to stage is going to be the uh, time of day because uh, you know you you will be fighting at various you know morning. Um, noon, dusk, and night. You know, uh, like the, for the uh, purposes of like the battles, the most important thing is like fighting in day or night because you get 
various artifacts that will improve your stats, like depending on the time of day, for example. Um, and yeah, other procedural generation things, like you can see the map here, they lead you to random events, like, and you know, some of them are kill all the enemies. Um, some of them, you know, break the ta uh, break the fortress. You know, and so on and so forth. Um, and as a game, it's fairly solid at this point. Like, I think from what I've seen in the early access notes, um, I think the focus here is more on content than uh, mechanics or polish, right? Um, and it's a and it is a rather it's a really good polished game for an early access title. Mm -hmm. I'd say the biggest problem facing uh, Pirates of Gravity right now is disorientation. Um, because it, it can be really easy to lose your sense of direction, um, especially when there's a lot of enemies. Um, it gets a bit visually busy, and I'm wondering if there's a way to like, have an indicator of which direction you are uh, you know, actually facing uh, without it being too intrusive. You know, maybe not have a big honking flashing arrow showing your direction, but something visually striking. You know, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely something that affects the game. Because, you know, there was definitely more than one time I'm like, oops, oh, I'm that thing and I'm upside down. And I got a thrust. Like, so. Um, also could probably, you know, maybe do with a tutorial stage. Um, you know, fortunately the game is simple enough where it's not a hard, it's not hard to get your mind around um, conceptually after a bit of time. But I will say if you're going in blind like I was, it's a bit disorienting. Uh, the first time out. So, I'd say that those are my biggest game notes at this stage. Um, let's see, other aspects is, you know, being, you know, being a roguelike, a roguelike light. Um, it's got upgrade paths. Um, also, it's got special items. Um, you can carry up to three at a time. And, they, you know, you, you do have to wait for their cooldowns and such. And there are things like better cannons, more power, you know, more powerful cannons, uh, stronger boost, that kind of thing. And you can unlock more, you can improve them. Uh, you also, um, this being a pirate ship thing, a pirate tower. Um, I, I just can't shake the notion that I am using the roof you know the spire of a church to fight pirates with the design here it does like, kind of look like that yeah like i'd say that's another thing you know maybe redesign the the ship here to make it look more piratical or something like or maybe add a bell like it's up to the devs there you know um let's see you know as far as the game how the game plays um this is another thing I'm not sure is is coming or not, but you know this is also what happens when you deal with early access games because you don't know exactly what is in a game and what is going to be promised. Um, yeah, it's like, but there's not really any controller support that we uh, noticed or found, like. Um, it's uh, strictly a keyboard and mouse, and that's probably the preferred way to play it, given, uh, you know, you can see the targeting reticule um, that it uses. And that's going to be just more inherently accurate with a mouse, but, you know, controller support probably wouldn't be out of place here. Um, let's see. Uh Oh, and yes, uh, you also do get a cr uh, crew of pirates who can be upgraded and um, 
when selected, an individual pirate can improve an aspect of your ship. You know, speed, firing, defense, that kind of thing. You know, um, like I said, you know, visually, it look, you know, it looks fine. It, it's just all a bit sparse in terms of um, actual things in the you know, foreground and such. Uh, let's see. The music is appropriately piratey. Yeah. Definitely gets you in the mood for a swashbuckling adventure, even though, you know, there are no cutlasses to be seen here. Um, still top effort. I mean, um, you can get kind of like a cutlass as a random crew bonus thing. That's about it. Right, right. But you know what I mean. Yeah. It, it's like there's no swinging over to capture enemy ships here. Not, And honestly, I don't think I would want to see that in this kind of game because, you know, it's not a proper pirating game it's um you know it's a it's an arcade game with a piratey theme around it and you know a pretty uh solid gimmick like let's see and yeah i think that's about it for my impressions generally uh favorable uh could use some work in a few areas but nothing major you know like i said just I think the biggest thing that the game has to do is make sure um, visualization of the, the direction is better imparted to the player. Like, like I said, but I leave it up to the developer to handle that um, thusly. Because um, this did, um, at time of recording, it's mid May of 2022. This came out. Um, March 31st, 2022. And according to the early access note on Steam, this is going to be uh, in early access for about a year. Um, like I said, that's why I think the uh, focus here is more on content. Um, because not all the content is added. But that being said, the content is stuff like the items and the upgrades. So I imagine that the core design is on uh, display um, and uh, in terms of pricing, um, it is mentioned here that the uh, that the price will increase um, as more content is added to the game. Um, the this game does clock in currently at nine ninety nine. Um, and if you want to try before you buy, it does have a demo on Steam. That's what Petty's playing. Like, uh, so is it worth ten dollars? I would say generally yes. Like, I, this is probably a, a, a game you want to get in on the ground floor or, you know, the floor that it is at at this point in time. I'd say $10 is a pretty good price for this game. Like, and I'm having problems, right, you know, seeing a recommendation at, say, $20 or 25 you know, wh whatever pricing increases that are planned here. Um, and that comes down more to the actual gameplay than the content. Because like the like the gameplay is in, is incredibly simple, um, and f you know the levels don't last too long. You know, it's, it's a real it's a really good ten dollar game, but I don't think the gameplay has enough meat on its bones um, currently to justify you know going double on that or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, Petty, you've been playing the game for the audience, so what are your impressions of Pirates? Did he mute himself? Did he mute himself? Maybe Wanna I try did. try it again with your mic on? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I will admit, yeah, it's kind of disorienting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a surprise. I'm imagining that they uh, got a lot of comments about that. Yeah. And I imagine it's, it's going to get, you know, more of an issue at, the further you go, because, you know, that's how uh, skill curves work. Uh, the early episodes are l much less uh, populated. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, any other questions, comments, or concerns about the Pirates of Gravite? I think I'm good. Uh, Galix? 
I think I got a decent idea of it from what I saw. Okay. All right. So the boat, be- the boat does look weird being vertical like that, though. <laughs> yes, I've commented on it. Uh, is it? You know, you can like you can sort of you can see what they were going for, and you can see like the actual pirate ship on the left side of things. But it, you know, it, it just looks like a tower, or you know, or like a church spire more than a boat. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, it really isn't a boat. It's a it's a rocket that happens to have a boat grafted on it. Yeah, and it's like how 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 does that work for the people that are on it? I have no idea. Like, I don't think it's addressed, at least not right now. So presumably there are internal decks or something, but anyway, uh, that'll about do it for Pirates of Gravity here. Uh, be sure to tune in after the break as Petty Fan will be giving his impressions of Badia. <laughs> 